Okay, this is part one of the Blender Game Engine Python programming tutorial series that I'm about to do. There'll be quite a few lessons in here. I've already done a, oh, 20 or so lessons on basic Python programming, and that applies to just Blender Render. And I've also done a series of tutorials. Also, you can find that in a playlist on the Game Engine physics. So you should be, you should be familiar with logic bricks in uh, the Game Engine. And if not, I'll show you what I mean by that in here you would go to game logic and you would set these sensors and controllers and actuators up and if this is not completely familiar to you you should check my uh, tutorials in that playlist under game engine physics first and then because what the programming does within uh, blender using python is it replicates a lot of this kind of stuff and in some cases you need to use the programming but the but the logic bricks are very powerful so but what we're going to do First of all, I'm going to set the scene. The reason uh, I use the game engine a lot is, one, just for interactive stuff, which I like to do, but also because I typically take something like this. In fact, let's just do this in here real quick. Something I would do within the game engine. I would shift to the game engine like this, and I would come over to the physics tab, and I would turn this into a rigid body like you've seen in uh, the game engine physics tutorials. And I'll change that radius just because and then this plane by default is static within the game engine in the blender render you would have to set that as a collision object and then if I press P and run this well actually it'll turn white you're not going to get a very good indicator so I'll show you what else I do is I use texture mode a lot so in texture mode within uh, the game engine I need to have some lights set and the way you do that you come over here to this render button and make sure you set the GLSL shading in here and then we better give it some lights that we have a light but let's see there's a light there in the scene this sometimes these planes get upside down somehow on me that plane I swear it must be upside down I'm gonna click it and find out I'm just gonna rotate that plane 180 degrees oops I had the wrong one I can't even click the plane. There it is. See, sometimes it's upside down. When you can't select it from above, it gets upside down. I think that's when I scale it. Sometimes I move the mouse past the center point, and it actually scales it down and scales it back up and kind of flips it over. So I'm going to rotate that on X 180 degrees, and there's my surface that I have in here. All right. So now when I press P, that thing just drops down to the surface. Let's rotate it a little bit, see if it interacts. Well, it doesn't do much yet, but we'll, we'll fix all that up. But that kind of gives you an idea. So I would create the animation within here, and then I would come up here and record the animation. I would, I would click that, and then when I ran it, it would record a bunch of keyframes. And those keyframes I would take back into Blender Render, and you would see all the keyframes here on the timeline for that object. So I mix and match those all the time because I might create the animation within here and then go into Blender Render and actually render it within cycles. So I switch all the time. Someday it might all be integrated together, but for now this is the way to work. So, uh, so basically now since I have the lighting set in the scene, from here, come up to here and go into the scripting mode. And I already have uh, scripting set up. It shows up like this, but I have some a file already typed in right here. It's really very basic. There's not a lot to, to getting started, so we'll start with something simple. In fact, we don't even need all of this, but I'll show you what this is. Just the key things, if you're not familiar with Python whatsoever, one thing is you want to make sure that, see this space here like this? That's one tab distance. So I'm defining a function called main here, and I end it with a colon. Let me zoom in on this a little bit. There you go. And I uh, have a colon at the end of the line and then when I press return for if I was here see it's indents it automatically four spaces in or basically one tab in and that's where these next commands need to be because they're a part of this main function like this alright so this is outside of the function and you need to just type this in called import BGE blender game engine okay and then uh, these are just common things that are required for kind of the startup of all the Python programming within the game engine. If we, we want to, in fact, I want to get a keyboard, so you're going to just make sure you type that in. And this is a controller, just as 
just under like the logic bricks this is we're assigning the controller to this name CONT we're assigning the player which is like an object to the controller dot owner which means I'll get to that in a second we signed the scene and then we're going to go do something down in here but just just check out this code and type it in first because a lot of programming if you're not uh, an experienced programmer the best way to learn programming is just to look at other code and type it in and get used to typing it in and eventually you know you'll you make small changes and then it makes a lot of sense and then down here notice at the very end what I'm doing I call the function main notice it's back on the main line and I call it with open and close parentheses but there's no colon at the end of it like that so when this file runs gets executed it calls main and then it comes up here and it, and it runs all the code within this main method right here like this well but another key is how do we get it to run this main method right well we can do it just by running by doing this let's see if I was just to do I'll show you what it does and does not do if I just press P you see it does nothing it virtually does nothing it just turns that screen blank alright I'm gonna escape that like this alright I'm gonna first of all I'm gonna go into texture mode because without texture mode it just doesn't work alright so now if I press P there we see it happening in here we're just basically seeing the same simulation that I'd set up it's falling because this was set as a rigid body object right but I want this so this code doesn't seem to be doing anything except within this code I do have you and you need to type this in as well right here make sure you type this line in this is you don't have to worry everything exactly what it does right now what this line says is basically it's looking for a keyboard event and then you can look up all these keyboard events and this particular keyboard event it's looking for is the up arrow key that's just the same as the way you would do it in the logic bricks for the controller you have the controller you press you click the mouse button and then you press the up arrow key this line is essentially the same thing as that it's scanning for the up arrow key if you want to scan for the down arrow key you just change it to down arrow key like this in, in uppercase and then if it finds the up arrow key it's going to take it says take the player dot local position dot y and increment it by one this plus equals means to add one to the existing value so the and this dot y means to the existing y location all right so it should move it in the existing y location and this player is what I set up here as the controller owner so that's really the name of this but somehow this code has to get executed you know so it it has to get executed numerous times if it wants to constantly scan for this keyboard I mean for the keyboard like this so if I was to if I was to run this and press the up arrow key let's see if it even does anything alright so I'm gonna press P I'm gonna press the up arrow key I'm in the window but it's not doing anything right okay well that's because you need to have this code associated with some object in the scene and so I'm going to associate it with this so you have to use the logic bricks just a little bit but not much so the down here the name of my file I've named it as keyboard input so when you first uh, when this window first shows up I'll show you it shows up like this as what well, shows up is text it'll have something called text well it'll do just like that if I click that that's what your window shows up from the beginning it sh shows up as text and you would type your code in in here but I've created another file by clicking the plus button and I called it keyboard input and then I typed all this stuff in here alright so the name of my Python file is keyboard input and I need to somehow associate that with this object in order for this code to work in order for it to know that this thing called player is associated with that cube so we could call this anything we could just maybe sometimes I do this make it simpler I just call it you know cube object just so I know what it's referencing and so I'll call this cube object okay like this 
and then from within here we need to go into the logic bricks so we'll go into the game logic like this and I'll go full screen real quick for a second and then we'll add a sensor and I'm going to add an always sensor whereas normally when you're in the logic bricks within the game engine where we were doing before we before we added a keyboard sensor like this and you clicked in here and press the up arrow key that'd be one way to do it but when we do it in Python you come in you add a sensor and you add an always sensor and you click this button right here is a pulse it's triggers over and over and over and then you add a controller and instead of an AND controller like we do before we add a Python controller and then we link them together like we've done and then we need to give it the name of a script and the script we want is keyboard input and you don't need to do anything over here because what we're doing over here in the logic bricks is what we do in the code instead right, so but you do need to have these in here like this so the cube basically has this sensor that's constantly scanning the key is always constantly running this code like so let's go back to the uh, scripting window okay so now what's happening is the cube is associated with this code and since I click that pulse button it's it's always going to just keep running this code meaning it's so it's always going to come down and it's going to continually scan for the keyboard event which we have set which is called the up arrow key and if it finds that I've pressed the up arrow key it's going to take the cube object and it's going to take the current local position the the y value of the local position you make sure that's a capital P there and you increment it by one this would be the same as taking local position dot y is equal to local position dot y plus one this is a shorthand term in computer computer programming we call it plus equals sign alright so now when I run it by pressing the P key it's still going to run the simulation first but now when I press the up arrow key it should move it by a factor of one each time alright so <laughs> did you see that did you see that alright I press it there and I press the up arrow key if I hold it if I see what I did there all right, I'll do it again I'll run it once and I'll just press it briefly I mean I just alright just barely so it's, you see and if I hold it down it's just going so that shows you that it's constantly scanning alright so that's just the basics of getting started I'm gonna repeat a lot of this until we get going because there's only about mm, 10 really fun cool commands that we need to really make a lot of action happen in this game engine and you can see that was like how much code was that you know like what a few lines of code in fact you know just as you just know you're gonna need these things in here these are common things you need and so eventually if you just start seeing it over and over again then it'll make sense and and um, and we'll continue in the next lesson alright I'll see you in the next lesson